In this session, we introduce pairs trading. We will discuss what pairs trading is and how you can make money doing it. We will discuss what you need to know about the members to form a suitable pair. We will look at the advantages of trading a pair of stocks or other assets as opposed to trading a single stock. We will also explore a number of scenarios under which a pair trade can be profitable. Lastly, we will construct a beta hedge pair trade. First, we are going to look at some of the benefits of trading two stocks together. When you trade one stock, you are betting on the direction. Suppose you are bullish on Apple. If you buy Apple, you expect the price to increase. It does. You sell at a higher price. You are able to buy low and sell high. As long as you cover costs, this trade makes you money. To illustrate, let's pick a company on which we are bearish. We choose Microsoft. To review, selling short means selling something you don't own. First, you have to borrow the stock from someone who owns it or has the right to lend it. You may have to put up collateral and pay them a borrowing fee. You do this because you expect the price to decrease. In your hypothetical scenario, it does. Then you buy it back at a lower price. This is called covering a short. You sold high and then you bought low. We have the same story as before, but in reverse. Again, as long as you cover costs, including the cost of borrowing, the trade makes money. Suppose you're bullish on one stock and bearish on another. You think Apple will increase and Microsoft will decrease. Is there a way you can trade the combination of these two securities as a package? There is. This is pairs trading. Pairs trading involves the combination of buying a security long and selling a security short. Again, this is because you have two different views on the companies. In the best circumstances, you think that the security you buy will increase, and at the same time, you think that the security you sell will decrease. However, you don't have to be 100% correct. Both companies can increase, and you can still make money. How? As long as the company you buy outperforms the company you short, you will make money. If your long security increases in price more than the short security increases in price, you have made a profitable trade. So you can think of pairs trade as a bet on outperformance. In fact, you can even make money if both companies do worse. If your long security goes down in price, but your short security decreases in price even more, then you also have a profitable trade. In this example, your long security appreciates and your short security depreciates. Here, both sides are profitable. Your long Apple makes $1.21 and your short Microsoft makes $3.83 for a total profit of $5.04. This is your optimal outcome. In this example, your long security appreciates more than your short security appreciates. Your long Apple produces a profit of $3.64 and your short Microsoft produces a loss of 221, or an overall profit of 143. Not great, but still better than your trade going the wrong way and hitting your stop loss. Suppose, for example, you have a market correction. Equities fall 10%. To be sure you lose money on your long security, fortunately you make money on your short security. Can you weight your long and short positions so that these gains and losses offset each other? You absolutely can. You have to weight the position sizes appropriately. The best you can do is beta weight the positions. Suppose you enter a pairs trade with Apple and Microsoft. Each stock has a beta. As you recall from your previous studies or work experience, beta measures a stock's covariance with the market per unit of market risk. If the stock's beta is 1.1, then it has a 10% more systematic volatility than the overall market. If you are trading large cap stocks, you can use the S&P 500 to measure the overall market. If the market were up 20% over some period, then you would expect a stock with a beta of 1.1 to be up 22% over the same period. Conversely, if the market were down 20%, you would expect that stock to be down 22%. Suppose Apple has a beta of 1.1. Suppose Microsoft has a beta of 0.96. What do we know? 
The capital asset pricing model, or CAPM equation, shown here asserts that a stock's expected excess return is purely a function of its beta times the expected market risk premium, which is equal to the expected return on the market minus the risk-free return. According to the estimates of beta based on the most recent three months of data, Apple is 14.6% riskier than Microsoft. Why? Its beta is 1.1 compared to 0.96 for Microsoft. When you form a pair, you will not buy the same amounts of Apple and Microsoft. Instead, you will trade an amount that leaves you beta neutral. The equation is simple. The beta of Apple times the market value of Apple should equal the beta of Microsoft times the market value of Microsoft. Recall that the market value is simply price times quantity or P times Q. Suppose Microsoft is 135 and Apple is 200. You wish to sell short 1,000 shares of Microsoft. How many shares of Apple do you need to buy? From the equation, we see the beta of Apple times price of Apple times quantity of Apple must be equal to beta of Microsoft times price of Microsoft times number of shares of Microsoft. So you need to buy 589 shares of Apple. We can check the market value of each side. The market value of Apple is 117,800 with a beta of 1.1. The adjusted value of the Apple side is 129,580. The market value of Microsoft is 135,000 with a beta of 0.96. The adjusted value of the Microsoft side is 129,600. Within rounding error, we are beta neutral you will have no problem finding the prices, calculating the betas, or determining the relative amounts of stock to buy and sell to put on a pairs trade. The real difficulty you will face is choosing the stocks themselves. How do you decide if two stocks are good candidates for pairs trading? This will be the topic of the next session.